Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah. Happy New Year's Eve. Uh, It is the last day of 2021, and, uh, you know, after 2020, we all thought, it can't be any worse or weirder, and we shouldn't have said that. (laughs) Um, And now today, we find out that Betty White died at the age of 99. I know so many people were... were, um, rooting for her to hit 100 this week has been crazy I know that this time of year is is hard uh, for losing people but in the last week or so we've lost bell hooks archbishop desmond tutu john madden and now uh, betty white so 2021 can just go on out and uh here's hoping that 2022 will look a little different um yeah, if you had a great year in 2021, then uh, that is awesome. If you had a hard year in 2021, I feel you. But um, it's the it's the ending of an of another year, and we're on the cusp of a new year. So, however you are celebrating, I hope you are doing so safely. For my family, my husband and I and the pets, we are just staying home, and uh, I'll probably stay up till midnight. My husband will probably go to bed early. We might watch a movie somewhere in there if we can decide on what to watch, find something that we want to watch, and, you know, there will be snacks. (laughs) That's about as exciting as we are getting this year, and I am okay with that because we've got some big transitions coming up in the next month and, and the next year, so a quiet 2021 New Year's Eve is just fine with me. I will snuggle with puppies and read and crochet and watch TV. Not necessarily all of those are in that order, but well, definitely the snuggling with puppies. But let's talk about books. Let's talk specifically about The Book of Souls by Kevin Moore, who is my guest today. The Book of Souls is his debut novel. It is the first in a series. You know how I like uh, coincidences or connections between my interviews and this week was no exception. I had back-to-back interviews last weekend on Sunday, the day after Christmas, and both were debut novels. They were both the first in a series. Both authors' wives encouraged them to write this book, uh, the books that we talked about, and um, both authors mention their high school reunion in some way or uh, another in the interview. So I thought that was, I just thought that was interesting, especially since I had the interviews back to back on Sunday morning. Uh, Let me go ahead and give you the description of the Book of Souls. This is from the back of the book. Um, According to American Online Radio, first of all, it says a spiritual roller coaster ride, Harry Potter meets the exorcist. That should give you an idea of where we're going. (laughs) Um, The dead don't come back, but some never leave. Jack Kelly remembers everything about his wife and children the wonderful smell of his wife's hair, the way she whispers to him at night, his three children running through the house, the sound of their laughter. That was his life before the accident. His near-death experience left him in the in-between space, somewhere between this world and whatever comes next. But he recovered and woke up as his 13-year-old self. The doctors tell him it is a false memory, a result of his fall and the insult to his brain from his injuries. How can a 13-year-old boy have a wife and three children, they ask? But how can he see and hear dead people, demons, ghosts, and shadowy creatures? And if they exist, then it is so inconceivable to, is it so inconceivable to believe that Jack's life as a 47-year-old man with a wife and children existed too? Jack begins his journey to find out why and how, and in the end, he resolves to find his way back to his true existence, back to his family. 
That is the description of the Book of Souls. Again, the author is Kevin Moore. This is dark. It's spooky. It's got creepy moments. It's paranormal, supernatural, verging on horror. But uh, you know me. I'm not a huge fan of horror. Not a huge fan of gore and being scared out of my wits. <laughs> and while well, this book, as I said, is definitely on the creepy side, it's it's the type of horror that I actually enjoy. So uh, if that tells you anything about this book, if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, then that should, that should tell you something uh, about the nature of this book. Jack, as a character, is fascinating because he is 47 years old experiencing life with a wife and three children that's how we open the story that's how uh, there there is a, a another opening scene before we see jack with his ch- wife and children but then we see jack 47 wife three children and then suddenly he's back in his 13 year old self in his 13 year old body can you even imagine being 47 and living your life again as a 13 year old i mm. I'm going to go with no. Too awkward. Way too awkward. But that is Jack's reality. And then as if that's not enough, as if a traumatic accident, a brain injury, trying to recover physically, etc. isn't enough. Now he is literally seeing dead people. And he's trying to deal with that as well as waking up as a 47-year-old trapped in a 13-year-old's body. Jack has some issues. <laughs> Jack has some some things that he needs to be dealing with in this book, and that is what he does. That is what he is trying to figure out, the new reality he's trying to live into, uh, all the while people are telling him to just forget the wife and kids. They don't exist. So let's go ahead and turn now to the interview with Kevin so he can tell you more about this book and the inspiration for it. Again, the book is called The Book of Souls. The second one is coming out in 2022. It is called The Book of Demons. Let's talk to Kevin about the series. Hi, Kevin. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, thank you for having me, Sarah. Thank you for being here. Um, We're going to talk about your new book. It's the first in a series. It's called The Book of Souls. But before we do that, um, I would love for my listeners to get to know you a little bit. So if you could share something about yourself, that would be wonderful. Okay, sure. So my name is Kevin Moore. Um, This is my first novel. um, And it is, there's a two book uh, series, um, maybe more. Um, I'm also a yoga teacher, which I came to very late. I became a yoga teacher in my 50s. Um, and I also became a Reiki practitioner in my 50s. Um, just, just to change things up, to keep growing. Um, and uh, I'm a lucid dreamer, which I never knew what that meant when I was a kid, but I, I always was able to do it. And um, it kind of helps with the writing. Um, I'm been with, I've been married to the same person since we were 18 and 19, uh, my wife, and uh, I have two kids, and uh, one of them is autistic, and one of them is going to be a doctor in, a doctor in psychology, um, and that's kind of me. I, I love storytelling. Even if I don't get it down on paper, I, I have a lot. I have more ideas than I have time to write. So. I imagine that's probably the case for a lot of people where your brain is just very, very full, but you don't have time to get everything out. Yeah. And I, I think it kind of, sometimes it stems from when you're a child. Like when I was a child, like yeah, my house could be very chaotic. And I grew up in New York City, which is where the book, The Book of Souls, is um, set to a certain degree. Um, And I, you know, that was my escape. I would just create and I would see somebody and write a story in my head about them, never thinking to that early because I couldn't spell very well (laughs) to start writing that early, like when I was in grammar school. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the book. It's it's called The Book of Souls. It is the first of a series. Uh, can you give an overview of the story? So it's a spiritual journey, but it's basically a metaphysical ghost story. And it's about um, Jack Kelly, 
um, and you're first introduced to him in his 40s. Um, and he has an experience and he wakes up basically. He is his 14 year old self and he has fallen through uh, a condemned boarding house and been in a coma for the last month. And he wakes up and he has um, uh, supernatural abilities that he doesn't remember ever having. And he can't let go of his life as an adult with his wife and his three children. Um, and all the doctors and the psychologists tell him that it is the result of his brain injury. Um, and he doesn't believe that because it's so real to him. And that's where the story is. The duality of the story is, is he, is it or isn't it? Yeah. And, and whether it is or it isn't, it's so real to Jack and it's, it's, it's almost painful as well for the reader to to now be 13 again with him and to have had this experience of being a husband and a father and and everything that he goes through and now he's 13 and 13 is still a child and he's being treated like a child um so it's it's this very awkward um i guess is is one word for it but the, this tra painful transition yeah, you know, and it is, and, and, and it's because, and part of that came to me was like, um, you know, years ago when my father was left, he had a stroke and he had a major stroke and his reality was completely thrown off. Like he would say to me, can you go to the closet and get my leg? And I was like, you know, because he, he lost the right side of his body, which is where the stroke comes in with um, the, Mr. Cairo. And when Jack starts working with him, because Jack is able to pick up his his emotion through symbolism. Um, so yeah, it is. It's very it's a very awkward thing because you have people telling you it's not real, and you know that it is real, or you feel that it is real. And so he's constantly going back and forth to you know because he's afraid of people thinking he's crazy. And, and that is like, you know, if anybody's ever experienced anything supernatural and somebody's, and you're telling somebody who is not open to that, um, and especially as a 13 year old boy, because you're, you know, or a 13 year old girl, because you're so vulnerable at that point in your life. And, you know, to have that security of that family, that is the strongest part in his heart right now, to be back in his father's house, to be back in his eighth grade class, in his Catholic school. And that's when all the fun begins because then, you know, he looks across the street and there's a ghost waiting for him. And it kind of makes this journey where he's going to rediscover himself and what, um, it's also sort of like a, a chance of, you know, I, I don't know if this has ever happened to you, Sarah, but like there are times in your life where you're like, wow, I wish I could redo that. Like a part of your life, like, I, I could be better at that now, <laughs> knowing what I know. Um, and so he gets the opportunity in a lot of ways to do that. Like he was afraid of everything as a child. And now he's, you know, helping ghosts accept and, and get to the next spot. Yes, it's a, so on the one hand, there are things that I would love to be able to maybe go back and, and redo from a different perspective, but I am 46, so I'm almost the same age as Jack, and the thought of going back to eighth grade, no, <laughs> no please, please, yeah. no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe for a visit, but, have, but to have to go back and be 13 and do it all over again, <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm good, thanks. <laughs> So. Yeah, no, it is. It's daunting, right? I mean, it's daunting. And that's why, like, for me, I was like, I had to, um, I had to bring in, you know, the supernatural elements, because I think that's where it gets, you know, fun, like when you're dealing with demons and ghosts and shadows that come off walls, and, and you have an understanding, uh, because you, you've had a life, in a, in a sense, so he he's like, wait a minute, but it's it's also like, um, like I know the story of Pandora's box is big in this, in the book. Um, and it's also about reopening the box, but discovering the fact that, yeah, all of those negative things come out of the box, but the, the thing that wasn't opened is hope. And so Jack 
is hopeful that he's going to get it right and he's going to be helpful, even though there are times where it doesn't seem like he's helpful. Um, mm-hmm. Because, you know, from, from the other characters' points of view, like uh, with Peter Cairo and um, the Mystics, uh, where he's, he feels like, you know, they were interested in um, ghost hunting, so to speak. But once they really meet Casper Greenstreet, who is this really powerful ghost, um, their lives are turned upside down. And so Jack does realize that there's that very delicate balance of being able to be helpful um, without, but also, it, you know, you're opening doors. You know, like we're talking about going back. When you go back and you change things, you change, you might change a lot more than you anticipated. Even the good stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, considering that um, Jack is a 47 year old now back in a 13 year old's body with all of those, with all the knowledge and experience of the 47 year old man, he could, he has the potential to change a lot. So there's some interesting yeah, potential connotations there. Yeah, very true. Mm-hmm. And like his relationship as he remembers it with his father, because he's like, how can you be my father? I was, I was with you mm-hmm. when you died. Mm-hmm. Right. And now he's back and his father is giving him, you know, discipline and telling him how to how they're going to do things. Right. And, and it's yeah, it's a it's a it's a trip. I think it's a fun ride. I hope uh, whoever reads the book will think it, too. OK, it is time for our first break of the podcast. Now that you know a little bit more about the Book of Souls, when we come back, Kevin will be sharing more about his initial inspiration for the story and the series. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. GSMC Beauty Tips Podcast gives you advice on everything from hair to fashion to skincare products. We'll talk about the latest trends in makeup, hairstyles, and anti-aging remedies. And we'll cover all of the newest fashion trends. If you have an interest in or questions about the beauty trends that might work best for you, the Golden State Media Concepts Beauty Tips Podcast has got you covered. Download the GSMC Beauty Tips Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I am speaking today with author Kevin Moore about his debut novel, The Book of Souls. Let's return to that interview. So what was your initial inspiration for the story? So the story started with the shadow people. And and that is like, I I think I told you a little earlier, I'm a lucid dreamer. And I have a son and a daughter, but my son has health issues. And I had three dreams, consecutive dreams, where the shadow people were in them. And they kept trying to get Matthew. And in the dream, I was actually talking to them, and I would say to them, what do you want? And they would say, I want him. And then after I had these three, you know, these three dreams that were very, you know, frightening, and very real in the, you know, in the lucid state, um, my son got very sick and ended up in intensive care. And I felt like it was um, that the dreams had prepared me for that month in the hospital with him, where everything that uh, could go wrong did go wrong. He, uh, he had to be traked. Um, then his lung collapsed. Then he got septic. Um, so he was in intensive care and he was very sick. But I felt like I had the shadow people or, you know, maybe death was, had warned me and, and Matt and I, now Matt is autistic and he, he doesn't speak, which I use a character in the second book uh, with that. Um, but him and I have this like relationship where we can hear each other. You know, we can, we connect even with our words. And so, 
the, I would stay in the hospital with him every night and sleep with him in the same bed. He wanted me in the hospital. And, uh, and uh, so the shadow people, which was a form of, you know, like death, uh, him and I um, really, really like connected every night and he would like pray together, even though he can't, you know, he just, he's not verbal um, to get him back to where he was. And we did. So the story started with that. And I wrote a short story about the shadow people. And uh, my wife actually said to me, I think you should write, turn this into a novel. And I said, I don't know if I can write a novel. And I don't know if there's enough in the story to write a novel. And then I got two books. <laughs> so that's, that's where it came from. Wow, that, that is- So it is um, based on a true event. Yeah, uh, and uh, rather terrifying, I would imagine. Yes. Yeah. And that's where fear, and that's why fear is like a, you know, a, a character in the book, because it's about, you know, it's primal, right? When you are going to you know, possibly lose somebody that you love, especially a child, because that's not supposed to happen. Right. Um, uh, it was very primal for me, and I had to deal with that fear. And so that's why I think, like, I know um, at the end of the they asked me, what do you, what kind of a book is this? And I said, it's kind of a self-help book because it is about fear. It's about Jack's fears and Casper's fears. And Casper doesn't overcome his fears, but Jack does. And uh, so. I imagine that the self-help book is not probably what they were wanting you to say. <laughs> in terms no. Of terms of putting this book in a box, a nice little niche. Yeah, right. I know. But I, and you know, I, I sort of said it tongue in cheek, but it is, yeah. it, it is really about fear. And, you know, um, you know, the people that have read it so far, they, they are getting that. And I think they are liking that aspect of it that, you know, we always have, you know, choices and you can have, you know, not that you're never going to experience fear because we all are going to experience fear at different points, but it's how we deal with it. Does it, does it cripple us? And in, in a certain sense, like it did cripple Casper in some ways, you know, Casper is the artist. Um, and with Jack, this time around, his fears do not cripple him. He's able to act. Mm -hmm. And so let's talk a little bit more about Jack as the main character. Can you talk about what, what's going to, in your opinion, resonate with readers? Well, what I think will resonate, and not what I hope resonates, is that Jack is, right, he's, he starts off, he's got, he's a 47-year-old, some 47-year-old man experiences, and he's back in a 13-year-old boy's body, and it's that, you know, um, duality, I guess, of, like, being, you know, like, as we get, as we become grown-ups, right, we're supposed to have all of the answers, and we realize we, we don't have a lot of answers. Um, and so I think what's going to resonate, or what I hope will resonate, is that, you know, it's a spiritual journey. It's like, this is Jack's looking glass, right? Like Alice went down, <laughs> down, you know, in the looking glass. And, and this is, you know, Jack, and it's a, it's a journey. And, you know, he makes mistakes, and he makes a lot of them. But he's doing it, his intent is pure. His intent is really out of love. And I think, I think that's big, you know, uh, I guess maybe not for somebody who's maybe hurt by him in um, not intentionally might not feel that way. But I do think that uh, they'll resonate because he, he is pure and he's trying to grow and he's trying to get it right. Um, even in this supernatural world where he's like, okay, so I, uh, I'm seeing ghosts, I'm hearing ghosts, I'm having a supernatural experience. How do I turn this into a positive? Like, how do I help this ghost who keeps, she keeps throwing herself in front of the train um, and she's, she doesn't realize she's dead. So I think it, that part of the story will resonate because he is on a journey and he's trying. I mean, it's, it's it's hard enough, I would think, for this character to wake up from a coma thinking that he is 47 to realize that he is actually 13. But then, you know, she, that's hard enough on its own. But then also you throw in the supernatural element. This character has a lot to 
work through and and deal with um, as the story goes on. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, that's I, I agree with you one hundred percent there. Like you wait because it, it's it's like it could be you could consider it a dream within a dream or a nightmare within a nightmare. Right? He wakes up from a fall. His body is is damaged, and the world that he has left is that of a father and a husband and a 47 year old man and now they're telling him he's 13 and so intellectually he is able to look in the mirror and go well yeah i am but i i still will not accept the fact that you're telling me that never happened because it's so real and he you know like even the psychiatrist is sort of like well of course you can you know i get it you you've given them all in depth stories but basically this is the life you wanted as a, as a boy because it's just him and his father right he has no mother he has no sibling so you've created this while you were in a coma and and jack is like well no because i love those people and that is where i the title came from the book of souls because he's like okay they want me to let them go because they're saying i will not have a fruitful life by holding on to this so i have to create something for them with meaning because um they're the ones that made me wake up if they are make believe if they're not real and so that's that's the gambit right because all jack wants to do really is get home to catherine and yeah, yeah, just to muddy the waters a little bit, there in the when in the forty-seven-year-old version of Jack, he has a brother. So is it a dream? Is it not a dream? Because he doesn't have a brother as a thirteen-year-old. So yes, yeah, it's very, it's very hard for Jack. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, um, in terms of of research, did you do any particular types of research for the book? Oh, I did. Um, most of it was done on the art. Because, you, as you know, the art is like a really big piece of of uh, the story, especially with Casper Greenstreet, who's the ghost, you know. Um, so that was fun because I, you know, I, like I said, I grew up in New York and I, I have, you know, we would take school trips to uh, museums um, and to the library, which I use in the in the in the story. Um, and so I got to do a lot of research on paintings and like because I, I was trying to give them the twist that casper gave them you know like uh um you know dean is coming instead of coming out of the show he's painting the actress who is coming out of the television and so i got to do a lot of research on that and i also got to do a lot of research on like bellevue hospital because um casper i mean peter cairo ends up in the psych ward because of this haunting in his apartment and now I lived about five blocks from Bellevue, and that was the hospital that you know family and friends went to. And a lot of people do think that Bellevue, you know, when they hear Bellevue Hospital, especially Easterners, will think of the psych ward. But that has got such a rich history, Bellevue, which I did a lot of research for, and and you know, put it in the book, and you know, the libraries and the artwork so that that was that was a lot of fun a lot of the um the mystical stuff uh was just from my experience in life uh that i didn't really have to do too much research on that because i you know whatever uh spiritual or supernatural experiences i have had or somebody i know has had i was able to like take and create something out of like the shadow people from the lucid dream um but the research was fun, especially with the art, because I love, I love art, but I've never been educated in it. Um, but I remember the first time uh, seeing the Mona Lisa in person and just being blown away about how small that painting is, because the story is so huge about the Mona Lisa. So that was, that was fun. Doing, doing that was really a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds like it. And then how about, um, character development so did you do you have a character sketch when you start writing or did, did some of your characters develop as you write how how does that work for you 
how it works for me is like my first draft is very um <laughs> is like all like when you take a writing class it's like the things that you're not supposed to do is exactly what I do do because I do it from like an intuitive kind of uh you know I'll write the first draft of a of anything whether it's a short story and I just let it go like um Casper Greenstreet is not supposed to be as big a character as he turned out to be but um he just needed to be heard and you know um I think uh like I know people say that is are you like do you when you look at a character and I think this is something that um somebody asked uh, Fitzgerald one time about like when you're looking at a character is are the characters all you or are they somebody else and for me I think the characters are all me but I might I color them in with somebody that I know or something I've seen or somebody I imagine to be so to answer your question, uh, yeah, the first the first round, I, I let the I try to let the um, characters come to me and and really talk to me because like, and I like to fall in love with my characters and if, even the bad ones, you know, even the ones that aren't uh, good guys, so to speak. I um, I like to see what they're coming, you know, like do they need to be heard? And the Casper Green he was supposed, he was always going to be the ghost, but he wasn't going to have like the rich background that I think he ends up having, you know, being like fully developed as an artist and, you know, his, uh, his, his abuse as a child and, um, and all of that. Um, that's sort of like, like he got, he got used because he really talked to me. So that's the way I do. It. And then I, you know, of course, when I work with an editor or go back to clean it up, you know, on the fourth version, I'm like, okay, this isn't working. Even though you like him or you like her, this character isn't working. And then I'll, you know, start doing storyboards because uh, years ago I did work from a film producer. And so storyboards are always big in, in film. And um, I'll do that, especially if I'm getting into trouble where I'm like, I can't seem to move the plot. You're not What's the that? first, you're yeah. not the first author to talk about characters you know kind of doing things on their own or taking on a life of their own but uh it's it's actually a little creepier in this case because <laughs> because of the nature of the book and then to have casper be like nope i'm a bigger character than this i'm like ah. <laughs> yeah but you know the funny thing is sarah i think that um i think jack could have end up being casper not in the same way as an artist but having those fears and those you know, becoming something else. Um, and so I, I kind of think that they're they're kind of the same or very similar characters, except Jack overcomes his fear where Casper is defeated by it, even though it gives him power, if that makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. Because yeah, then he becomes a real potent force. <laughs> they're kind of, in some ways, two sides of the same coin. Yes. Um, yeah, and just the, the the choices that they make and and the way they let fear control or not control them de determines how their characters go through the book. Yeah, no, I I think so, and and that's the thing about Casper, even though like you know, because he does have this really vulnerable side where you you get to see him, and that's why I felt like I really wanted to show him before he was the ghost that Jack is battling. Um, because it showed his human qualities and why once he became a ghost and had all this, this power, all that vulnerability and all of those things that overwhelmed him in life, he turns and uses as a weapon. Time to take that second break of the podcast. When we come back, we'll be talking about the arc of the series, how many books there might be, etc. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. 
Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and my interview with author Kevin Moore. We are speaking about his debut novel, The Book of Souls. Let's return to that interview. In terms of the story, you mentioned that you have two books, but there could be more. So do you have an end point in mind or do you think it's going to wrap up in the two books? Where are you leaning in for number of books in the series? Well, in, in this particular plot point, you know, with the artwork and um, it, that will be, and Jack, where is Jack? Does Jack have a family or doesn't Jack have a family? Will be answered in these two books. Um, but then there's, you know, I, there's so many places to take Jack Kelly, like, uh, especially as a teenager, um, uh, where he starts to, you know, dabble in, you know, um, like smoking, pot and he's like because it's helping him not deal with the supernatural and how he realizes that is getting in the way and he has to be alert and aware um so i think there's a lot of things to 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 say without giving the other book away or the 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 ending of uh the book of demons which will tie up the entire this entire plot point completely even though this book finishes the story of casper greenstreet um, so I just think that there's places to go with Jack, but I, I, I don't know. I might want to try, I have five different stories on my short stories on my, uh, desk right now. And one of them, uh, I was thinking like maybe possibly a memoir. I wrote a, a play a few years back called Conversations from the Sports Arena. And it was done at, um, there was a little theater in Hollywood called HB, HBO, the, the television network. HBO theater and it was done there. And I was thinking it's about um, me and my brothers. And uh, I was thinking about um, maybe trying to do that as a memoir, but there's also a story that I've been working on that I really love the characters already. And it's called uh, Waking Sleeping Beauty. Um, and uh, so, so as to get back to your question though about Jack, I, I'm, I don't know, I'm playing with a few different things with him and I, I guess a little bit of his I'm also waiting to see how he's uh, if he uh, if people are open to it you know if, they're, if they really like the book of souls and the book of demons then it's okay I've got a lot of outlines that I can go with mm-hmm. so what are you working on right now well I'm playing with um, the story um, waking sleeping beauty and it's about a, an L.A. A female L.A. detective. Um, and basically, there's three um, powerful women in the story. Um, and they are all, you know, sort of like, I guess you can see that I have a thing about waking spiritually. Um, and she's waking up spiritually. Um, and, and the other two women are waking, waking up to their, uh, their own um, thing in, that's important to them in life that they haven't really been exposed to. And that's where the, you know, waking sleeping beauty comes from. Because I feel like Jack has woken up to, to certain things like his supernatural gifts. So uh, that's the one I'm really playing with right now because I've been messing around with this story for a few years. I always try to write it as a short story first. And then if I think it should go somewhere else, then I'll you know, try and expand. And that's what happened with Jack. Um, 
And so that's what I'm kind of playing with, with Joanna Steele right now uh, to see if it's, if it's more than a short story. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, back to the Book of Souls. Where are the page numbers? <laughs> My book has no page numbers. I know, but they have them now. I think you've got a very, they sent you, they sent it out to you very, very quickly, right? Yes. And that's what I said to the gal that I was working with, Hannah. I go, here's the page numbers. And she goes, oh, well, these are just, uh... so anyway, they're all page numbers. Okay, I good. I, no, no, yeah, no, no, no. I, no, I wanted to make sure because it is, uh, you know, a, a slightly different kind of book. I just wanted to make sure that that wasn't part, that that wasn't a conscious decision on your part. You know, I wanted, if, if that was a conscious decision, I wanted you to be able to talk about it, but. Um, I'm... No, I appreciate that because I, I think that, uh, uh, like I said, the gal that I was working with on it, she goes, do you want page numbers? And I'm like, you know, I do. I definitely do. When I'm reading a book, I like to know the page I'm on. Um, yeah, it wasn't, it, that was, I think they just sent them out to you guys, a few of you, uh, very quickly. Okay. Um, yeah. But okay. I'm glad you brought that up because I was the same thing. I was like, what? No page. <laughs> well, the first thing I do, it's just a habit, is when I pick up an, a book to start reading it, I flip to the back to see how many pages it is. It's just the first thing I do with this one. I was like, I don't know how many pages there are. I don't know what to do with this information. Oh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is, you know, well, I'm glad you you uh, stayed with it, though, because it's like that could be a reason why somebody puts it down and doesn't pick it up again. Yeah. You never know what, what could put somebody off. So, um, but. Well, you know what's interesting? Do you, like, do you read the end? Are you, like, I, I have so many friends that I know that they say, I always read the end before I decide if I'm going to buy it. Oh, before, no, no, yeah, me neither. I mean, occasionally I will kind of, I try not to, but very rarely I will flip to the last page and just sort of glance at it, but I don't like, I'm, I'm the kind of person that doesn't, I've never like wanted to know my Christmas presents. You know, I didn't go searching for them as a kid. I don't want to know the end um, until I get there. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm. I'm. Uh, because I was wondering if maybe you did that when you realized there was no page count on your copy. Like you go. All right. Well, what am I going to do with this? Let me read the end. To see if I want to read the other three hundred <laughs> right. pages. Nope. Just, just, a, just a habit. And then I thought I would. And then I made a note. To ask Kevin about the page numbers. <laughs> yeah. No. When they come out, there will be page numbers. Because that was. Yeah. I was. I was pretty shocked by that to, to be honest with you. that was the first thing I said to there's no page numbers <laughs> and I, so I think it was the, yeah I think it's just it's amazing what we get used to and what we expect yeah and yeah. you know I'm I think you probably realize and this is my thing I did this in my Christmas stories book too I like headlines <laughs> I like little chapter with like if it's not the person's name it's it gives you a little hint of what you're you know, experience hopefully in that chapter. Oh yeah, that's yeah. Not everybody does chapter titles, um, and the, yeah, that's interesting too. I, I've that's not something that I've kind of leaned toward one way or the other because I tend to forget what the what I read as the chapter title <laughs> when I once I start reading that chapter. But I do know some people prefer one way or the other, so that's that's interesting. Yeah, I don't, you know, I don't know if that's me and maybe it'll disappear um, as I, the next thing I write, like not needing them. I felt like with this one, I did want to say stuff like, you know, the dead don't come back, but some never leave because I wanted them to know that this is, you know, because at the end of this story, I really want people to, like I was working with a couple of different editors and they said, so what is it though? Is Jack a kid or is, is, was, did he have that experience? And I was like, I'm not telling you. I'll tell you, you'll, you'll, after you read the book, you'll know. But I kind of want the reader to, like with some of these things, especially the supernatural thing, like, do you believe it or don't you believe it? Yeah. And just, yeah, you, you can't just ask that question. You got to go through the process. Absolutely. That's what I did. I was like, they go, oh, you're not going to, he's like, you're not going to tell me. I'm like, no. I'm not going to tell you, but keep reading. <laughs> <laughs> um, in terms of writing, I know that you said 
before we started recording, um, and you mentioned it here that you, you have written some short stories, um, but is writing for publication something that you always wanted to do or did it, did, did you decide to do that later in life? How did that work for you? Yes, I, I always wanted to write a book because, and I can tell you really, and I, I'm being heartfelt here. I think I was in, I don't know, maybe third grade and we read a book called The Flowers for Algernon. I don't know if you know that book. Um, I think I had to a, read it in third grade also. Yeah, it was, I love, that is like one of my old time favorite books. I just love that book. But the reason why I loved it was because uh, my nun told me to go open the boxes and get the books and hand them out. And I remember just opening the box and taking the book out and looking at it and going, oh my gosh, like, I, I don't know what, it was like the smell, the feel, the, the, the touch of the book, uh, the, the title, I, and, and just handling them all out. And I just was like, I want to be able to write a book one day. But I, <laughs> in third grade, I was a horrible speller. And there was no thing as spell check. <laughs> so I was like, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be, maybe, it, maybe I should be in like the moving storytelling, not, not something where I have to spell everything. But yeah, no. I did. I've always wanted to write a book. And a few years ago, I was at a high school reunion and a friend of mine, I, my Christmas stories had been out and they go, do you, you used to always say that to me. What I really want to do in, in, before I go is to write a book. So yeah, to answer your question, I definitely did want a book to so just to look at, and, you know, feel it and touch it and say, okay, there's a story in there. Mm -hmm. So I took some of those stories out of my head and actually put them somewhere. It's, it was a little bit of foreshadowing kind of, um, of opening that box because I know for a lot of authors getting that box of the first printing of their book, it, you, whether it's, you know, the galley reads or the, or the, the advanced reader copies, opening that box and seeing your book has got to be a pretty heady experience. It's just fun. Like, you know, it's like, um, for me, it's like, uh, you know, when you want to, like, I'm all about, like, I, I really believe in, like, you, you have to scare yourself and you have to surprise yourself at any age you, you want to do that, whether it's trying to write something and, you know, and there's no guarantee people are going to like it. Um, but it's, it's also, like, I always wanted to jump out of a plane. And on uh, my 29th birthday, I jumped out of a plane. And... It wasn't a tandem in those when I did it. It was like you jump out on your own. And my chute didn't open. And I had to go to the emergency chute. And I beat my wife down, who jumped out first, um, because then I was in an army parachute. And so seeing the book is like that feeling of like that moment of like complete excitement. And also complete anxiety of like, I hope they get what I'm saying. <laughs> you know what I mean? When you see the book and you, you look at it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it's definitely uh, a big, it's exciting for me. I, it's really exciting for me the first time I've seen the book. But even this one is more, because I think this is a lot more personal, even though I shouldn't say that the Christmas stories are very personal, but this story is, you know, very personal. It's like I was that kid that was looking out the window in Epiphany at that building, you know, the Gramercy Terrace, although that's not the name of it. Um, mm -hmm. So it's very personal. Yeah. Um, you know, um, did I answer, answer the question? <laughs> yeah. We kind of meandered, so I believe you did. <laughs> um, okay. Do you have, oh yeah, you did, because we talked about did you always want to write? And you said, yes. Um, yeah, in terms you can of, see I'm a meander. It, it's all good. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh my goodness. I can meander with the best of them. Sometimes I am so grateful that uh, we don't record these live because I can be a blithering idiot <laughs> or blithering blitherer or something. But let's go ahead and take our last break of the podcast when we talk uh, when we return, we'll be talking a little bit more about Kevin's writing style, whether he likes to outline and plot or whether he likes to fly by the seat of his pants, etc. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back.
Still on the search of that one true love? On the limbo in this crazy world of dating, marriage, relationships. Well, listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Relationship Podcast. Your one-stop podcast for everything about relationships. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and the conclusion of my interview with author Kevin Moore. And as we return to that interview, I edited in a spot that we were kind of in the middle of a conversation, but we were segueing, so it's going to pick up a little abruptly. But if you remember uh, before, we were talking about writing and styles of writing, uh, etc. And so, well, we were talking about meandering as well, which I'm doing now. Just to refresh your memory in case you don't remember what two minutes ago before the break. In terms, oh, actually, that, that what do you, do you, are you an outliner? Are you a plotter or a pantser when it comes to writing? Uh, what did you say, a plotter or a? A pantser, flying by the seat of your pants? Uh, the first draft, I am definitely, well, I definitely have a very strong story before I will sit down and like, like this one was with the shadows. So I, I already sat down and wrote the, the short story, and that was an outline. Uh, that was the outline for the novel. So short sto- short stories for me is like is sort of an outliner. I'm not a good outliner. I have to like put them out there to see if I want to spend, uh, you know, like I spent two years with these guys. I have to make sure I, I really need to do that. Then I'll do a storyboard once I get at least one draft done, where I feel like are these characters interesting? Are people going to like them? Are people not going to like them? Because I think you need a little bit of both. Um, are people going to care what happens to them? Uh, so I don't typically outline a story first. I do a little bit of writing to see if if I can do it. And then I'll do like little storyboards on them. But not outline, more storyboards. Mm-hmm. But yeah, something something ahead of time that you kind of get a feel for the story and not just jumping in and seeing where it takes oh, you. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah. Do you have, from your own experience, do you have advice for aspiring authors? Um, yeah. Well, I, I don't, you know, it's, I don't like to give advice because I'm afraid, like, my, the advice I'm giving somebody may not be good for them. What I, what I would say to somebody who has even a thought of writing just write it and, you know, just go for it. And it, and don't worry about if people are going to like it right off the bat. Write it because you feel like you really need to share these characters or to say something. And that would be to somebody who's ever thinking about writing. And what you have to say is important, no matter who you are. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, Because I like what you said, write it, you know, even if, even if people don't seem to like it right away, you never know what's going to have, what's, what's going to capture people's imagination when. Right. That lasting effect. And it might be that, you know, um, something that you're saying in the book catches somebody's imagination. And, you know, I think we're all supposed to be like, you know, here, here we are in the season of gift giving, right? Where we're all supposed to be doing that all the time. Like, and, you know, for somebody who's writing something, it might just exactly be what somebody needs to pick up and read. So I would say, yeah, write it because you, you, don't, you don't know what somebody else needs. And then when you write it and they, it, they relate to it and it like has a big, you know, impact on them. And they're like, oh my God, I love that book. And somebody else, 10 other people may read the book and go, yeah, I don't get it. But that one person that you that you land on is is as important as if all of them liked it, in my mm-hmm. opinion. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. When you take the time then to read for yourself, um, what authors and genres do you tend to turn to? You know, I, 
Sarah, you're probably picking up that I like, I'm like, I meander a lot. So uh, I do like um, a variety of different people. Um, and so there's no one genre. Like I got into like a lot of the spiritual uh, books in the last few years. There's a book, I can't remember the author's name. It's called My Wild Heart. Um, I also like uh, The Untethered Soul. Um, but as far as novels are concerned, like I loved um, The Night Circus. I don't know if you read that, but it's like, that's kind of a mystical kind I of thing. I haven't yet, thing. but it's on my TBR. Yeah, it's it's just kind of like something so outside, uh, you know. But I also like Michael Conley. Like, uh, I don't know if you're like a, um, like he, he writes about a police officer. Uh, a detective in Los Angeles. Uh, I liked his series, but I, I kind of like drift around. Um, I liked um, Lincoln and the Bardo. Um, and then I listened to George Saunders. He wrote Lincoln and the Bardo, but then he also did like, uh, and I listened to it on audio. That's a, I have a question for you. Do you still, is that still reading? Yes. If you're listening? Yes. Yeah, okay, good. Because I feel the same way. And I listened to his, um, like class on uh, the Russian writers, which I found like really interesting and kind of a little over my head, <laughs> but I, I liked it anyway. So yeah, I guess that's who I bounce around with. Like I'll read some like some nonfiction and then I like fiction that's anything but a really good character that keeps me interested. I like the, let me see. Oh, I like, um, I'm trying to think of Helen Brand. She wrote um, uh, Unbroken and um, Sea oh, yeah. Biscuit. I love Sea Biscuit. Is it Catherine? Is her first name? Yeah, Catherine Helen Yeah. Yeah, I, I've read Unbroken, but I haven't read Sea Biscuit. But yeah, she's a, an amazing author. Laura, well. Laura Helen Brand. Laura, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I just like love the way she writes and Steve Biscuit, even though that story has been told so many times, I loved it again, you know? Um, so yeah, I guess that's kind of where I am. And I also do like uh, some of the, um, some of the like spiritual healing books, like books on lucid dreaming. Or, I like, uh, I think Carolyn Miss, do you know who that is? She, she writes on like healing. She's an intuitive for, um, you know, physical healing. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I dabble with that stuff too. Okay. I don't think I'm familiar with her. So mm -hmm. how about internet presence? Do you have a website? What social media are you active on, et cetera? Well, I'm, uh, I, I do have a website. It's um, www.kevinmorepublishing.com. Um, I also, I'm on Facebook with it's Christmas stories. Uh, that's on Facebook and Instagram. Um, and, uh, I do have a Twitter account, but I don't tweet at all. And I, I barely get on there. I, I just, I don't know. I just find like, to, I know I need to do all of this stuff, but, um, with the social media. So that's my social media right now. And I'm, uh, on Twitter with LA food club at yahoo.com. I have not got on TikTok, but I hear it's very fun. Can be, or it can be. Um, yeah, it depends on what kind of TikTok you're on. My husband's TikTok and my TikTok are completely different. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, mine's all books and crochet, and like he says, it's nerd TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm perfectly okay with that. Oh, me uh, too. I yeah. think nerds are the most interesting. <laughs> I agree. You know what, I think like we go through our lives trying not to, like, we don't realize how interesting, like, those kinds of things are. Like, we, we, because when I, when I do look at the bigger social media, like, some of the, the reason why I stopped listening to Twitter was because I just was like, like, I, I'm not, I'm not interested in this. Like, it's, it was all like, kind of silly stuff. Some of it, you know. I feel like people have a love-hate relationship with Twitter. Uh, the people that love it really utilize it to the be their best advantage. And then there are people who hate it and just try to steer clear of it. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I'm sort of neutral with it. I just, I 
just don't think I know how to do it well. Yeah. Um, and I don't have the time, you know, like for me, it's also about time. Like, like I will, I'm, I have my own personal Facebook page, but I also have Christmas stories because I don't uh, around uh, my first book of short stories and on Instagram. Um, but I, what I love about Facebook originally was the fact that, you know, I'm friends with kids that I went to grammar school with, you know, mm-hmm. like we stay in touch. And that is like really yeah. cool, you know, to me. No, I agree. It's, it's, I, I found somebody uh, about a year ago that I went to kindergarten with. She was my best friend in kindergarten, in kindergarten, but I haven't seen her in 40 years. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. See, that's what I, that's what I love about it. That's where I, I really think it's true. When people start doing like politics and stuff like on that, I'm, I'm not interested. I'm like, uh, I already listened to NPR. Right. right. <laughs> I, li- I, I listen I, to the news. I don't need it on Facebook. Exactly. If I want your opinion, we'll have a conversation about it, but I'm just going to keep scrolling right now. Yes. And what I want to hear about is you, not about yeah. how you feel about something, unless it's a good something, you know, I mean, if you're talking about foster kids or something that's meaningful and people can make a difference about, but if you want to just argue on Facebook yeah. with somebody who has a different opinion, then it's, I, I don't know, sort of like a wasted energy. I agree. Well, Kevin, we've talked about um, a variety of different things today, which has been great, but is there anything that we haven't covered during our time together that you were hoping to be able to highlight? Um, no, I think you pretty much covered a lot, especially with the book. I will just say that the book is, um, you can pre-order it, but it's not going to be released until um, March 8th, 2022. And then the Book of Demons comes out right before Halloween on uh, October 11th, 2022. Um, Which is great if I can interject because you don't have to wait a whole year between between a book. Often with um, series, you have at least a year. And, and so this is this is only six months or so between books. And that's as a reader, that's better. Yeah, I, yeah, I hope so. And, and the book is done. The book is the book is ready to go. So as soon as we, uh, as soon as I get it, and I make sure those page numbers. I'll I'll make sure they send it to you, Sarah. Thanks for thanks for thinking about me and my page number need. <laughs> no, no, I'm I'm with you. But I seen that I was horrified. I was like, there's no page numbers. How are they? And they go, oh no, these these people are reviewers, and they're they're used to that. I go, no, I'm not. I I need a page number. <laughs> I, I agree, but, but I did I did interrupt you. So if there was anything else that you were talking about in terms of, of, of the interview, if there's anything else that you wanted to bring up. Um, no, I, I think we covered a lot about Jack. I, I think it's a very interesting story. Um, I think people, if they let themselves, they will really love it. And I think that it's also... Um, it's just a fun ride. It's, you know, it's like Harry Potter meeting meets the exorcist, you know? I mean, he's like this kind of cool little teenage boy who has this vision of a previous life or a previous life yet to come. And uh, the, the trouble he gets into is a kind of exciting spiritual ride. And I think that if people approach the book, not just as like, oh, well, this is a horror book, but more as this is a spiritual book that is supernatural in nature. And there might be some scary moments, but uh, there's probably a lot of scary moments, but that's what makes it a fun read. Mm-hmm. And that's interesting. I don't, I don't, I was trying to think of what genre I would put this in, and I definitely went more towards supernatural, paranormal. Uh, I understand that it could be, you know, considered horror, but that's not where my mind went. And I'm not a huge fan of horror. So for anybody that's wanting to read it, it's not like horror in the sense of a lot of gore and a lot of um, terror, um, but it does have those suspense, supernatural elements to it. Yeah, no, I think you said it better than I did. Like, uh, I agree with you. That's the way I would say, you know, the book is a, uh, you know, it's sort of like, uh, it's mystical, hopefully. You know, that's the way it was written. It's a spiritual, mystical, supernatural, paranormal thriller. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That has a few laughs, I hope, in there. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I think Jack is kind of funny at times. <laughs> he 
has his moments. He's so overwhelmed. Yeah, exactly. He has his moments. Um, one thing we didn't talk about was his just his foul, foul language when he wakes up from his coma. Yes. Well, that was research I did because I did do like where what would a person be like who has a near death experience but also has a brain trauma? Um, and one of the things that I did research was that there is foul language. Like they can become very, their language can become, I don't want to say uh, off-putting, but it's almost like that, that's his, in a way it's his release. And the doctor says to his father, look, this is not unusual behavior. And it isn't. It, and that was research. So I felt like I needed to do that. Otherwise, I didn't want to make them to be such a, you know, like, because nobody's, a, you know, I didn't want him to be a complete bitty two shoe. You know what I mean? Like, and even though he was dealing with supernatural, like, I wanted him to have a little bit of a, uh, an edge to him where, you know, um, you could actually see him overcoming some of this stuff and, and, you know, taking on ghosts. Uh, so, yeah, but that is true. You can have, I hope it wasn't off putting, but yeah, you can have, uh, that's, that's research where you will, you can have some cursing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, I've, I've read that as well about other people that have had uh, head trauma. So, yeah. and, and I think it's also something that he's trying to curb. You know, it's like that thing that he's trying to control and also with some of his exaggerating or as he says, he's lying. Like, why am I lying to my father? You know, mm -hmm. but he's also feels like, you know, when you're caught in the in-between, which is what a lot of it, where he is in this book, right? He's in between his adult self, his child self, um, seeing ghosts and being afraid that somebody's going to think he's crazy. You know, like if you, you know, talk to somebody who's had some supernatural moments, uh, you know, and you're saying that to somebody, like some people don't believe in anything like that. So they, right away, they're like, oh, they're off the rocker. You know what I mean? And that's what he's afraid of. So those are things that he has to overcome is his foul language. Mm -hmm. The fact that he's afraid of being considered crazy, like that becomes a very big thing for him. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think even from a coping mechanism, take out, take out the supernatural part and just think of waking up from a coma, having had this, what could have been a dream or, you know, thinking that you've had this whole other life. Sometimes swearing is the only, only means of expression to... <laughs> to get through some of that stuff i agree so i agree well on that note um <laughs> i want to mm -hmm. i want to thank you so much for taking time i know it's christmas weekend so thank you so much for taking time out of your weekend to talk to me about the book of souls and the book of demons which is coming out i really appreciate it uh, my pleasure i really enjoyed it and uh uh i hope to talk to you about the book of demons yeah i'm looking forward to that thank you I am definitely looking forward to the Book of Demons to find out just where Jack's story is going to take him. So thank you again to Kevin for uh, taking the time to talk to me. If you, like me, have a thing about page numbers, we did have a conversation about where are my page numbers. There there are page numbers in books that aren't mine. Um, so if you're curious, it is 318 pages according to Amazon. And I was trying to think, why am I so obsessed with page numbers besides just kind of knowing my end point when I start. I always, like I said, flip to the back and see how many pages of any book was when I start it. Before I start it, I see how many pages there are. And I think it stems from as I was when I was a kid, I was allowed to read for maybe not as long as I wanted before I went to bed, when, before I went to sleep, but I was allowed to read before I went to sleep. And I had this thing about how many pages can I read, you know, before I turn out the light. And so I would always count my pages. And I remember one time I was reading Little House on the Prairie and I counted, I think I was in first grade when I was reading Little House on the Prairie and I counted that I'd read 13 pages that night and I was so proud of myself. I'm not necessarily a fast reader, but I, I just love to read. So I've always been a I guess I've always been a little obsessed or a little conscious of page numbers. Anyway, there are page numbers in other books, and so you should get one that does have page numbers. But I digress. Or I meander, maybe. Thank you, Kevin, for joining me and looking forward to another conversation in the future about the Book of Demons. Thank you, as always, to you, my listeners. Uh, thank you for another great year of 
of author interviews and joining me for hopefully some books that have piqued your interest, some new authors that you maybe haven't heard before. If you're a fan of this podcast, please, as always, if you haven't done so already, uh, write us or give a, write us a nice review or give us a starred review. It does help to get the podcast out to more book lovers such as yourselves. And if you are not doing so already, follow the podcast on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Follow the authors that you listen to as well. Every little bit helps. It may not seem like a big thing, but just, you know, leaving reviews for podcasts or authors and books that you love, following on social media can really help creators out. And that is a wonderful thing that you can do. Maybe something to take with you into 2022. Uh, I'm not a big resolutions person usually because I can break them pretty easily, but uh, maybe that's something that I will resolve to do is be better about leaving reviews myself. I try to do it, but um, I, I sometimes get sidetracked. I hope that you will join me for my next interview. I have another third time returning author, three time returning author. How would you say that properly? Anyway, uh, I think she is the third author to return for a third time, which is pretty cool. That author is Debbie Burke. She is from Montana, in case you listened to the first two interviews and remember that. And she's here to talk to me about the next couple of books in her Tawny Lindholm series. So join me on Tuesday for that interview with Debbie. Thank you again for joining me. Happy, happy New Year's Eve. And if you're listening to this post New Year's Eve, happy beginning of 2022. No matter what this year brings you, I hope as always, as I hope that the year brings you lots and lots and lots and lots of time to get yourself lost in many, many, many good books. Thanks. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.